I'm Betty Banjak, and this is Look Who's Cooking. And today I have a very special guest for um, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, or getting ready to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, though you can eat it all year round, I'm told. His name is Steve Hatsey. Did I say that way? You said it absolutely right. Thank We've you. We've been practicing that for a half hour, guys. <laughs> <laughs> is that an Irish name? Uh, no, it's not Irish, but uh, I have some Irish in the family. Oh, you do? Right, yeah. You also have some in your brogue. Well, I had to practice it for the show, you know. Oh, do you? Right, yeah. Right. You're doing shows. Right. We're going to talk about that a little good, later. Good. Do you actually talk without a brogue? Or do you I do actually talk uh, without okay. a brogue. I didn't know if that was a yeah. <laughs> normal right. thing that came with you. Or no, you as an actor, it's one of the things that you have to, to be proficient at. Is if a role brogue. calls for an yeah. accent, you have to be able to use it. Yeah. you have any other accents? Yeah. Uh, you're going to put me on the spot, aren't you? Okay, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to have you cook. Very good. Very so good. What you, today you're making? Well, uh, a lot of people, when they think of Irish cooking, they think of corned beef and cabbage. And actually, uh, from one source that I saw, the, it, the corned beef and cabbage isn't cooked in Ireland as corned beef and cabbage. It's, that's almost like pizza. When it got to the United States, then they made corned beef and cabbage. Yeah. They cook cabbage with, with ham steaks and with uh, streaky bacon and with bangers or sausages, but it, not necessarily with corned beef. So I'm going to be making what, what's called, or, or traditionally called, the Irish national dish, and that's called Kolkana. What does that mean? Colcannon, uh, it, it's, I, you know, I don't know. Oh. In, in, t in Irish, in, in terms of the Irish, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Okay, but it's potatoes? But it's potatoes, and I've already started the, uh, um, co Be cooking the potatoes cut. because they do take a while. So they've been uh, cut, about two, two and a half pounds of potatoes, uh, or six medium, medium potatoes. So they're all set to go, and uh, what I'm going to do is take those off of the heat and put them over here. Boy, you're good. No pot uh, holder, and this is hot. That is hot, right? But the other things that are in potato or in the uh, colcannon, beside potatoes, uh, is this um, cute little thing. Okay, uh, it's called a leek, and it's a member of the lily family, and also related very much to an onion. Uh, we don't use them here in the United States, or at least in uh, a lot of folks don't, um, and I'm not sure why. The French called it the poor man's asparagus. Oh, yeah. Okay. But they're great in terms of vitamin C and vitamin A. They've got a wonderful, delicate flavor, very much like the onion. Uh, in a, uh, Aren't they sandy in between? Well, that's one of the things that you have to be careful of. You've got to cut off the bottom here and cut off the, the, st the, uh, the green leafy part um, before, just before you go to use them. And you notice that it's got a center core that's kind of wrapped around. And inside, it almost looks like an onion, if you're going to cut an onion. And then what I like to do is cut it that way and then this way so that these pieces begin to fan out. And I just take uh, some water and just put this in a cup with water and let it sit there uh, and run it under, under running water. And uh, the sand that's in here will come out and, and fall down to the bottom of it's the like cup. It's like spinach just uh, Kind of like that, yeah. And if you want, you can notice right inside here, do you see that? Yeah. Is inside. And you can remove these outer tougher layers and just keep the, um, uh, the inner ones. Now what I'm going to do is um, I want to saute these, so All the way I'm going to get this thing. Up a little. Got lower. it? There yeah. we go. Uh, so I want to start with this frying pan. Um, and we've got some butter. The, the nice thing about kolkanen is, it, I think it's like any, any dish that anybody teaches um, or cooks, um, is that there's so many varieties and so many ways that you can change it. I'm going to go with a real simple one and then also share with you some of the things that okay. you can do to alter it. So well, we're going to... your own dish It does. For a while. It does. But then, and not having made it, so we're going to take about three tablespoons of uh, butter or margarine. And again, if you're watching um, fat, you can use a different... Uh, a different thing for sautéing that. Uh, just to show you now how to, uh, to, to do these, I would then, once these are cleaned, okay, and this is, what, this is a wonderful thing. You see them That's as advertised wonderful. on TV. I never use it. I always use the chef's knife. But this is called a chop and scoop, and they've got these infomercials that are on. Uh, and you can buy, I think you get 200 knives for $1.50. <laughs> uh, the, but this one I really, really like. I had a friend that used to cook uh, Thai food and used a, a, a cleaver, but it really, it really works very nice. I have and one of those serrated knives yeah. that costs a dollar, dollar fifty-two, right. and it's really, it does a nice job. This does, really it really nice. does, and I'm becoming very fond of this. My children gave it to me for a present. So, and, and it's a chop and scoop, and then you simply pick it up, and there it is. Uh, this I'm going to make go away because I've already taken the liberty of because dicing, the sand, right? right, because of the sand. So here are the, the uh, leeks, and they do, they have a very faint, I think of them as mild, onions. Yeah, yeah, onion, but they're much richer and, and much tastier. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the butter melted, I'm going to put the leeks in, 
and uh, begin to saute these very lightly. And I would like to wish everyone out there a happy St. Patrick's Day. And in honor of that, that's why we're cooking this national dish. Yes, that's why we're cooking it. We're also, a little bit later, we're going to be making some gammon steaks with whiskey sauce. Oh. Gammon is what the Irish use for ham steaks. Okay. You know, I always thought, to be honest, uh, Irish cooking is sort of boring. Uh, it, you and know, so, it's funny, yeah. And I got yeah. used to it, and I saw that it was just as... It was just as tasty and as good as it a is. lot of other cooking. It cooking. really is, yeah. Because it isn't what we always, you know, the corned beef and cabbage, which I like, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. And things, but it's, a, it's many different things, and it's nice, clean vegetables. And yeah, it is. The, the interesting thing about the, the potato, which, which uh, is, is very, very, has been very, very important traditionally in Irish uh, culture as a staple, uh, we're also going to use the cabbage here. And, and you want a small, use a small head of cabbage. You want to take off the outer, um, uh, darker colored leaves, okay, till you get into that nice light green look in there. Um, and cabbage is another thing that has uh, vitamins and minerals. And the nice thing about this dish is that the cabbage is going to be cooked, uh, not boiled first, and then the, the cooking oh, water okay. thrown away. So all of the minerals and the vitamins that are in the cabbage are going to stay right in the dish. You know, most nationalities use cabbage in a different way. Right, but right. they all have cabbage yep. somehow. And if you've not... Um, worked with cabbage before. You gotta get that core that's out, it. right? That's it. This is white core that's right in the center here that we want to get rid of. And then uh, this is going to be coarsely chopped because ultimately we're going to take this and we're going to mix it with the mashed potatoes and it's going to have a nice, nice texture. Pennsylvania uh, Germans, I, I spent a lot of time up in the Lehigh Valley and the influence of Pennsylvania Dutch and Pennsylvania German cooking was significant up there. They make what's called a Dutch filling, yeah, yeah. which is a mixture of mashed potatoes and, and bread and else celery, else and everything goes in it. And this is kind of like that, and you might we want to consider it the Irish equivalent. Listen, but now, I know you're an actor performer, uh -huh. and but you said you retired. Of course, you look much too young to be retired. But <laughs> thank you. Uh, so you're work, but you're working at your craft yes, now. Yes, this is what I do full time now. As cook. an actor, and well, I do cook. I've oh, been oh, cooking okay. almost as long as I've been working in the theater or doing doing theater. Uh, I asked him how long he's been in theater, and he said, "How old am I now?" <laughs> <laughs> I've been performing for a long time. Yeah. So. Okay. Now these are getting. You can see they're getting a nice um, a nice color to them, and they're gradually going to get um, uh, softer. We want to be careful not to overcook them uh, because we want to keep that texture when we add it. Ultimately, add it to the mashed it potatoes. Like sweat the word it's sweating them. Right. Right. Yeah, that's a new word right. around, sweating. So what we've done then is uh, we'll take the cabbage and we'll chop it coarsely like this. And I've already, again, taken the liberty of doing that. And I actually use just a little bit less than one, uh, one, one um, small cabbage head. And there's four cups, approximately four cups of cabbage here. Uh, what I used here were two of the leeks. And you want to watch that you don't get that too, um, too high so that you start to brown them. You want to keep them light. And I'm getting a little bit too... He's now, truly so prepared. Be you notice he's like, you okay, know. Okay, so we got the cabbage again. It's coarsely chopped. We're going to add that now to the pan. And along with that, we're going to add a, one cup of, a, um, you can use either water or broth, or if you make uh, your own vegetable broth, or if you're a vegetarian, you can use vegetable broth. This is going to be chicken stock. Okay, one cup Ooh. of chicken stock to all of that. I love the sound of that. It does sound good. And it, as yeah. this cooks, it even smells better. Oh, I know. I was surprised when I made this for the first time at how absolutely delicious it was. How, uh, it when did you make me. it for the first time? About two weeks ago when I knew I was coming on this show. Oh, you didn't have it made this I had not made this before. Ever. No, I had not. But it's uh, interesting. I mentioned before about the potato. Uh, and that's one of, the, one of the, uh, the main reasons that we have such a, um, a, uh, uh, a wonderful part of our population who was Irish is that they did come over from Ireland during the potato famine. Well, they came uh, away from the potato famine. Well, they left Ireland to get away from that. I uh, heard the potato famine was actually, that was a fungus. It was a fungus. It wasn't it? what people were thinking of little bugs, you know, right. per se. It was an actual fungus. Right. And what, uh, what the part of the problem was is that the, um, the, the, there were tenant farmers and the Irish lived on these farms. And uh, 
uh, they were owned basically by the, the Protestant absentee landlords who lived in England. Um, I, I, what I want to do now is begin to prepare the ham steak. This one is uh, Smithfield ham. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of these that you can get. Uh, this is a smaller one and very, very low fat, this particular mm -hmm. kind. This, I'm going to use this one as a, actually a slice off of a, a whole ham because of the flavor. It gives a much nicer flavor, and we're going to be sautéing that and then using uh, the broth in there, what's left over for our, uh, the whiskey sauce. The whiskey sauce. Right. Whiskey, yeah. So this uh. is the gammon steak, and uh, what I'll do is open it up. I just love pork. So what I mean, ham especially, but any kind yeah, of pork. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you said that you just making this two weeks ago or whatever. Uh, when I knew we, we, you were going to do this, I tried to find my cookbooks, uh, my Irish cookbooks. Right. My cookbooks are all still all over the place because I haven't been a year since I moved into where I live now, and uh -huh. the books aren't in order. They're just in the bookcase. And I couldn't find it, so I didn't know what went in it. So I had, you know, so I'll have to watch what he puts in it. One of the wonderful things about the internet is for cooks yes. is that there's a wealth of information. In fact, that's where I found, I must have found four or five different Kolkhanan recipes, and then I just took the one that to me sounded the best and uh, decided to use that. So that's, that's what this is. And I'll also talk then about the variation. So I'm just going to mix this up, make sure that the cabbage um, comes oh, in contact with the chicken broth. And actually, that's going to begin to cook down, and the chicken broth is going to be absorbed into the cabbage. And what I'm doing with the ham steak is if you're watching cholesterol and watching fat, I just want to get rid of the, all the excess fat on this thing, OK? I don't have internet hookup yet. I keep saying well, I'm going to do it. That's you got the reason to. why I, yeah. I, w I miss it, so I'm going to get it. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, Betty is serving as our official taste tester. We're going to take a couple tablespoons of butter and margarine again. That's why you have this job, so I can I just eat my way <laughs> through life. Be my guess. Is it done yet, Betty? No. No, okay. So we're going to wait till the cabbage just begins to get tender. <laughs> and while we're doing that, we're going to saute the ham steak. And actually, I just cut it in half to make it a little e bit easier to manipulate. But I've removed, this has a bone, right? I've removed the bone. And that's Are another thing that gives us some flavor. Yes. It does have the bone in the center. So I've removed that. But once the butter melts, we'll saute the ham steak and keep an eye on the, uh, uh, the, the rest of the dish. And we get back to the potatoes. Uh, the Irish, uh, a lot of the Irish Catholics lived on, on um, uh, uh, farms, and they were tenant farmers that uh, farmed an acre of land or so, and the basic crop was potato. It, it's nutritious. It was able to feed a family of four or five for a year from one acre's growth of potatoes. Mm. Okay? And they cultivated uh, a potato called the lumper. Now, I'm just going to put these into the chicken broth, or into the, uh, uh, to the butter, and let those brown, and then we're going to remove those in a little bit. Um, this is sort of... And Bubbling this is getting there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the potato was called the lumper, and it was not a particularly tasty potato, but it was for the um, uh, amount that they had to grow. It was the one that gave them the greatest yield per acre. Um, the problem was when that the uh, um, for the uh, potato famine, the yeah. um, uh, the rust that that started the mold that started was uh, attack the lumper potato. Is that what And it they was? didn't have a lot of different varieties. And what happened is it wiped out an entire crop. And that lasted from 1845 till about 1851. Well, if I remember some research I did mm -hmm. on the internet, the potato was taken to Ireland by the somebody of York, Prince of York, King of whatever, you know, yeah. the Duke of York, and uh, they actually introduced potatoes to Ireland much earlier on. That the, the, it's been around for a while. Actually, I didn't get any any facts and figures on the potato. I know the leek has been around since the Phoenicians in 2000, and that actually it was worn in 640 A.D. by the Welsh when the Saxons invaded. Uh, to differ, the, the uniforms were very much alike. So what they did was they took the leeks and they stuck them in their helmets and they stuck them in their uniforms to differentiate them oh. from the other invading army. I thought they did that to make them look <laughs> so no. fancied up or something. No. Okay. Now this is getting ready. What I'm going to do is to turn this off and notice how it's 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 compacted down, and the cabbage is now. It smells wonderful. Yeah. And it, uh, again, I was I was just blown away by the flavor here. Of this, and and most of the, the broth has been absorbed by the by the cabbage, and all the vitamins and minerals are staying right in the uh, in the dish. Tell me, okay, you're doing a show now. Yeah, in the area. I am. Yes. And it is. Can I say it? Moon for the Mist Moon for the Misbegotten. Misbegotten. It's a wonderful, wonderful play uh, uh, that a wonderful, wonderful company is doing, and that's the Iron Age Theater Company. Oh yeah. And they're based right here in Norristown, um, at uh, the. Um, uh, Narstown, Montgomery uh, County Cultural Montgomery Center. Montgomery County Cultural Center. <laughs> Good. Now, while we're doing that, let me get these I over here. 
Yeah, the Montgomery Col County Cultural Center, and it's right on, um, right around the corner from the courthouse, actually. Yeah, it's on DeKalb Street. Right. What I'm going to do is drain these potatoes, and I'm hoping I don't have too much water in here. No, you're okay. okay. I, this is my little thing I rigged up and once yes, to Yes, Betty drain. did. Okay. Good. Great. It's just Take enough. that away. Now, what I want to do, and I think we're done cutting. <clears throat> is uh, we're going to take and we're going to add some but uh, actually no we're not I normally when I make uh, mashed potatoes uh, I, I use butter and uh, and milk and salt and pepper but because we've got a significant amount of butter in here um, we're not going to do that now this is interesting the last time I made this uh. it sauteed up uh, but right now it's uh, retaining quite a bit of the juice but that'll be fine but maybe uh, you know uh, it mm -hmm. has juice in it. Like, was it frozen? No. Uh, no. That and that's, gives... yeah, that's a nice thing because it does give yeah. a nice, nice flavor. Yeah. Uh, pota mash mashing potatoes, there are many different ways to mash potatoes as there are people who do them. Some people like to rice them, like to hand mash them. Uh, I happen to prefer um, an electric beater because it's easier. Um, also want to um, add some milk. And again, if you're watching um, your weight, you can go, this is whole milk. You can go down to uh, one percent. If you use skim milk, it really gets to be um, uh, the, the flavor. The water, it, it water takes, out. Yeah. It runs out. Uh, and yeah. also, uh, is, uh, if there are people who are on um, uh, high protein diets, can use soy milk okay. also for this. But again, How it's a different taste. I don't even smell that this bottle. is called uh, it's called grab a milk. Rosenberg Dairy <laughs> splits it out, <laughs> and that's it's what it great. is. You go in, you know, just grab a milk and you take it and slurp I it down. I thought something special when I saw yeah. it sitting there. So we're going to add some to the potatoes. Listen, what was the favorite role you ever have done in your life? Uh, boy, there have been a lot of them, and I've done both musicals and, and dramas. Uh, I think the one that, uh, and all of them have something particular to offer uh, in terms of challenge. It may be uh, learning a particular lines. The one I'm doing right now is written by uh, one of the greatest playwrights that's ever been in America, is Eugene O'Neill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the challenge is... Uh, uh, there's a lot of words and a lot of lines. Uh, and that was always my nemesis, and I have computer <laughs> background. And right. I'm noted for, in fact, they got awards for mixing up um, s lines and sentences, right. and they come out really f strange, like... Okay. What I'm doing is um, testing this for salt and pepper. Okay. Um, You're allowed to test. So we're going to... Testing's good. Add some salt. And I like freshly ground pepper rather than the other. You also direct. I have uh, done a lot of directing, yeah, during the course of my life. And um, that's fun, too. And it's a very, very, very different process. Okay, so what we've got now, one thing about using an electric mixer uh, when doing potatoes is make sure that you don't, you turn the mixer off. Uh, before you uh, take them out of the potatoes. I have a story you take about that. Potatoes. My friend did this. Yeah. She, her mother always had an old-fashioned old right. kind. First time she ever used that, she got white icing all over the whole yeah. kitchen of her boyfriend's house. I think I told That's that story funny. before, but yeah, make sure it's off. Now, uh -huh. you live in the area? You live in Perkiam? I live, uh, you? yeah, actually we come. You want a more? I live uh, up the road a little bit in Perkiomanville, so I come down the, through Schwenksville and uh, into Collegeville and then came over that way. Yeah. But I did live in Philadelphia. I grew up in Philadelphia and I lived in the Lehigh Valley for a number of years. Now, you see that the potatoes are at this point nice and mashed and nice and oh, wow. fluffy. Um, if you're pressed for time, you can use instant mashed potatoes. You can use, um, uh, they, they now make them in the refrigerated section uh, in, in uh, containers of already oh, yeah. freshly made potatoes that all you have to do is microwave. Um, as, to my mind, there's nothing that can compare to freshly mashed potatoes, oh, yeah. lumps and all. Okay, what we're going to do now is to take the cabbage and the leek mixture. Okay, uh, some people add garlic to this. I decided to keep it out, uh, not because I don't like garlic, but sometimes when you're performing and you've got to get right into somebody's face, uh, it's best if you don't, <laughs> don't use it. All right, so we're just going to add this right into the pot. I always thought that's why actors didn't eat until after a show instead of before. <laughs> well, so. also, in having a, uh, a full stomach, it can yeah. be problematic sometimes. And that, that uh, OK. Good. So all of that's in there now. And what we're going to do is just uh, lightly toss this, ah. OK, 
to mix the uh, cabbage in and the leeks in with the potatoes. And you don't want to beat it because you don't want to break up the pieces of the cabbage and the pieces of the leek that are in there. And also notice the nice color in honor of St. Patrick's Day. It We've is. got some green in there. Now, some people make this with kale also, okay. which has a real, real nice green color and would show up a little bit more. Uh, this particular recipe that I used also called for chives, but I had a dickens of a time finding them. And uh, I grow them in the summertime, but I don't, I didn't have them for this. Okay, so that's all set. The calcanin is all set to go. The nice thing about this is it'll stay warm. And what we're going to do is finish making the, uh, the whiskey sauce. I'm going to take the two ham steaks, okay, and put oh, them on the serving that's platter. That's my portion. Where's everybody else's? Okay. okay. And in the pan, I'm going to add uh, a couple of teaspoons of minced onions. And again, I've taken the liberty of already of doing that. And again, more or less to taste. It depends on whether or not you... Uh, um, what are we looking for? My other uh, saute spoon. What happened to it? Oh, he here put it, it under there. Right. Okay. And we're going to saute know these. Well equipped here. We're going to saute these um, just till they uh, begin to uh, turn a little bit translucent. Okay. And notice we have the the, um, uh, the the residue from the ham steak in there, which is going to give our whiskey sauce. Uh, an incredible, incredible flavor. How are we doing with time, by the oh, way? Oh, we're okay. 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 I didn't get the wrap-up cue yet. Okay, so good. Well, okay. I want to make sure we get we get done all of this. So I'll speed things. Um, do we have how much time do we have? Um, we're going to take then the chicken broth that was I'll left. I'll tell you when it's, we have. Okay, to the chicken broth that was on. left. We're going to get about three quarters of that. So I do want to add a little bit of water. Uh, oh, actually, that came out to be exactly three quarters. And again, this this depends upon what you uh, how you. Um, how many servings you're going to make, and how big your family is, and how big it is that you want to make. Uh, the onions, now that they've cooked up and are a little bit yeah, translucent, they. we're going to add the chicken broth to this. Uh, what we're ultimately going to be doing is thickening this, and some people make a, what's called a roux, R-O-U-E, a French term, by taking the, the fat that's in there and adding flour to mm -hmm. it. Uh, one way that I uh, like to do is um, make a, uh, a mixture of a little bit of water, and uh, this stuff right here is terrific. Oh, yeah, wonder. it's that nice and thin. Yeah, it's, it's a quick dissolving, up. and it doesn't clump up uh, flour. So we're going to add some of that I also to the water. If you use cold water, it won't clump up. If you use hot water, yeah, hot water will make it. Yeah, it almost it starts to cook it. Together. But notice how how nicely that mix up, and we're going to use that then. The other thing we're going to add to this is a little bit of. Uh, uh, whiskey. Uh, you could use a, a fine Irish whiskey, Jameson's Irish whiskey. Uh, and uh, for those of you who, are, who don't drink, uh, not to worry, because when you put the, any kind of uh, alcohol into a cooking dish, the alcohol evaporates and it leaves the flavor. And I would recommend not using a cheap uh, hooch that okay. you make in your backyard. <laughs> you want to get something that's fine and has a good taste to it okay. because that's the taste that's going to remain in the whiskey sauce. Could you use apple juice if you didn't want to use? Uh, you could, but it's going to taste different. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, too, we're going to add a little bit of um, a brown sugar, a couple of uh, teaspoons of brown sugar to this, okay? And again, more or less to taste depending upon uh, how sweet you want to make it, but this is also going to brown it up a little bit, okay? And I'm also going to scrape the sides of the pan to get the... Uh, uh, the, um, the drippings from the meat in. And we're going to add a couple of teaspoons of Irish whiskey, one for me, one for you, and one for the rest of the company. Good. We've got that now. Did you hear about the Irish boomerang, Betty Banjo? No, I didn't. Well, it never comes back. It <laughs> just keeps singing about how much it would like to. <laughs> That's an Irish joke I threw in just for the occasion. Just for the occasion. Yeah. Well, I, I had an uncle of mine who, who lived uh, in Limerick, and he wanted to know how long it took to get from Limerick to Cork. So the first time he was on the bus, he says to the bus driver, to tell me, how much time does it take to get to Limerick to Cork? The bus driver says, well, it takes two hours. He says, well, all right, then tell me this. How much time does it take to get from Cork to Limerick? He said, well, it takes the same amount of time. What are you asking a stupid question like that? Two hours. Why are you asking a dumb question? He says, well, all I know is it takes one week to go from Christmas to New Year's, but it's a heck of a long time to go from New Year's <laughs> to Christmas. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> that's great. That's a great little joke. If I can only remember it, I'll have to <laughs> That's the problem I have with remembering jokes, too. Now, what I'm going to do is crank this up a little bit, and we're going to try to thicken this whiskey sauce. 
And, and what if else you can you smell, put in there? That's it. That's, that's it? it for the whiskey sauce. A, a, a couple of teaspoons of whiskey, more or less, depending upon the taste, and uh, the onions and some brown sugar. Okay? okay. So that's thickening up a enough. I think we can make it a little bit more And what I'm going to do just to hurry I'm things up. I'm glad to know that flower is still around. I didn't, yeah. haven't seen it for a long time. You know, and I never, never used it uh, until I decided to, I saw it at the store. I said, hey, I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to uh, run out and get some. All right. It's wonderful. Because I might have some in the cupboard, but it's about right. 12 years old. You now, know. this is thickening up. It's got a nice gold color to it, and it's got kind of the consistency of a thick soup and the little pieces of onion that are in there. And maybe we start plating some we of this can. up. We can. In fact, that's what we're going to do. You're looking for that plate? So we've got, if you want to serve this now, oh, you can take the uh, platter. And with the, uh, the ham... And we're going to put some of the whiskey sauce on it. Ah. Okay. Oh, it smells And then so in good. honor of St. Patrick's Day, we're going to take some chopped parsley. And the chopped parsley, we're just going to use as a little bit of a garnish on top. And then to make things extra pretty for the occasion, parsley's nice and green also for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's great. Okay, so you've got that presentation. Now, the, uh, the Kolkanen can be pre uh, presented the same way. Um, we take it and we can place it into a serving dish. Oh, we're not going to put it on top of the... No. <laughs> we could. Oh, we I could do that. that it on top we of could the put it right on top of the, the ham steak, but we're not going to. Okay. Oh, and look at that. And, and if you want, you can actually take, uh, if it's not rich enough for you, oh. take a pat of butter and put it right in the top and let it melt. Now, oh. we're also going to do the same thing. Look at that. that. Look okay. at that. It's just so good. Right. And there you All have right. the Kalkanen. Okay. I and want the to taste snacks. everything. Well, you certainly can, can do that. And again, I was just I absolutely floored at how rich and wonderful and, and uh, delightful that is. You want to taste? Taste. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> it's really good. Mm. Spectacular. The leeks make it so different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can do it with onions. <laughs> so if you but haven't tried leeks... You know, yeah, give, give him a shot. Can we shut this off so you don't lose all your, right? your sauce? Thank you. I thought I had turned it. Oops, I turned it on. That's, That's reverse my problem. Thing. Listen, okay. this is a great St. Patrick's Day meal or a meal any time. It doesn't yeah. have to be St. Patrick's Day. And I'm really pleased you could come. And I know you have a busy schedule. Right. Well, thank you for having came me Came a little here. distance. It's been a pleasure. Early on a Monday yeah. morning. Yeah. And uh, so we'll say from Betty Banjack and Steve. And Hatsy. Steve Hatsy, we wish you a merry... No, that's, no, wrong. that's wrong. A happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye right. now. Goodbye.